Hey everyone, I'm mine, and this is set number 75353, and or Speeder Chase Diorama from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 608 pieces, 3 minifigures, and will retail for $79.99 in the US. This set does not officially release until May 1st, 2023, but it was sent to me early by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So here's the Endor Speeder Chase Diorama, and it's of course a part of the LEGO Star Wars Diorama line of sets, so it has a lot of things in common with the other Diorama sets. Personally, I'm a very big fan of the Diorama line, I think it was a super cool idea, and they're some of my favorite LEGO Star Wars sets of all time, so I'm happy to see that they're doing more this year. However, is this one actually any good? Well, let's take a look up a little bit closer. Starting at the base, it's of course the same base that the rest of the Diorama sets have, just this black border that has these silver grill pieces on it, and then in the center there's two printed tiles, one of them is the same one that comes in every diorama set, just the tile with the printed LEGO Star Wars logo, but then the other one's exclusive to this set, but luckily it is printed, not a sticker, and it's a quote from the scene in the movie that this scene's meant to represent. So in the case of this set, it's quick, jam the comlink, center switch from Luke Skywalker. I will save all the diorama sets, I would not call this one of the most iconic quotes of all time. With all the previous ones, the quote that they chose is a pretty iconic line from the movie. This though, I feel like is just a line from the movie, and there's just not a more iconic line from this scene. However, I think it's fine, because I think this was a a great choice for a scene to pick, and the build is pretty cool, so I don't mind the quotes, a more obscure choice. And then something kind of cool that's the case with this set, as well as the other diorama released alongside it, is both these sets represent scenes from Return of the Jedi, and they each come with a special printed piece to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Really happy that's a print and not a sticker, and it looks really good on the diorama display. However, if you don't like it, it's also very easy to remove, so you can display the full set without it. But now, let's take a look at the build of the set up a little bit closer. You can see it's of course a build of the forests of Endor, with the the two speeder bikes flying through it. The speeder bikes are held up on these like trans clear bar pieces with one of the DC superheroes action bar pieces at the very end to give a bit of angle to them and I will say that does look pretty cool. It allows the speeder bikes to hover above the ground and you can also get some really neat angles with them like this or if you don't want them to be angled at all you can just remove that action bar piece at the top and reattach the bike back on like this which honestly I think might even look a little bit better. I just feel like they weren't making too crazy of turns in the movie. I know there are slight ones but yeah just hovering like this is more what I remember. It's entirely up to you though how you display this set. I'm actually going to entirely remove both the bikes for now, so you can take a look at the terrain around them, and then we'll take a look at the bikes themselves, and then I'll attach them back on. So you can see the floor of this set is just absolutely covered in foliage. They use like this more modern Lego leaf piece, these like curled ferns, these three-leaved plants, these like smaller grain flower pieces, and then also these all new curved fern pieces with like the spiked ends that were introduced with the Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell set. Happy to see these being used again, because I believe this is the first set other than that one to use them. But yeah, you can see they fit perfectly to represent the foliage on Endor. Then there's like this nougat path in the middle, and that's like the path that the speeder bikes are taking. But then there's also the two trees on the sides, and they're surrounded by these dark green plates. I really like the angles that the set uses to transition from the dark green into the nougat. All the shapes and everything seem very random, there's not like a pattern to them, which helps add to that very natural feel. And then the dark green areas do have a bit of dimension to them, such as these Nexonite shields under the tree, or this plate coming up by one at the very back. But yeah, overall, it's just lots of different foliage all throughout. This is one of those sets where if you intend to play with it, it is going to fall apart because there's just so many pieces that you can just knock off accidentally. However, this is a diorama, it's not meant to be a play set and there's really no better way to do foliage. It's just something to be aware of. The trees are each unique, though they do use a very similar design. They have brick-built roots at the base, which are pretty varied. There's a bit of sand green growing up the sides, I guess, to represent, like, moss, as well as a few more of these leaf pieces, both in standard green and bright green. And you can see that's the case with both trees, though they each have their own unique things. Like this one, the roots go up a little bit higher, and they're very smooth, and the leaves climb it a bit on this side, and actually the moss climbs it a bit, too. But then moving up the tree, there's a very cylindrical design. Obviously, it's still blocky because it is Lego, but you can see while keeping the blockiness, they try to make it roundish, which honestly, now that I'm looking at it a bit closer, seems pretty nice. And it almost represents like the texture of the bark of the trees. I really love that. That's of course the case of both trees, they're done in a very similar way. And then the trees are topped off with a few of these like spiked pieces. I'm not sure if this is meant to represent like the tops of the trees being cut off, or if it's just meant to imply, hey, there's meant to be more tree here, but we can't include all that in the set, so they cut it off right here instead. But you can see they included a bit of dark orange in here, I guess, to represent what the inside of the tree looks like. And then there's a few different branches coming off. The branches just use these brown tentacle pieces, and then the leaves at the end of the branches are all the same, just using these classic Lego leaf pieces, all in the same configuration, with these larger dark green ones in the center, and then these smaller olive green ones on the sides. There's a total of three of these branches on the left tree, which is slightly taller, while there's four branches on the right tree, which is slightly shorter. I will say I wish there was maybe just a few more leaves
leaves on these trees. I feel like I say that with all Lego trees. But yeah, I feel like while the one on the right's fine, the one on the left feels like it needs a bit more cover because it feels very barren. And I don't remember the trees on Endor being this barren. However, it's not a huge deal and very easy to customize if you wanted to. And it does still look good, don't get me wrong. I just think it could look even better. And that's about all there is to the actual natural part of this build. So now let's have a quick look at the speeder bikes and then we'll come back to the diorama so I can show you how they reconnect. So we've gotten speeder bikes many times in LEGO Star Wars, however this has to be one of the most interesting designs I've ever seen, because there's no way for the minifigure to actually sit onto the bike or like stand on the bike, rather the only point of connection is the handlebars. So the minifigure is not holding onto the handlebars, they're gonna fall off, because yeah, if I rotate them up, you can see there's no studs or anything on the seat, the minifigure sort of just has to stand there. I actually find that pretty cool because it gives the bike a much more unique shape, because they don't have to worry about including studs right there. But then you can see the handlebars are done using like the classic LEGO nozzle pieces, as well as one of these robot arms, I forget where these were initially introduced, I know they were used in like Lego Monkey Kid. Speaking of Lego Monkey Kid, they use like the larger Monkey Kid staff pieces at the front right here to bring us to the very front of the speeder. And it's got like one of those rounded gray orbs at the front. Underneath they use the Fez piece in black, which it's always really cool when they use that part. Not a super common part to see. The build actually does have the pedals of the bike hanging down. They use Ninjago Skulkin arms in black. I'd like that those were included even if Lego minifigures can't actually reach the pedals. It still makes the bikes very accurate to the movie. And then at the very back of the bike, it's the largest and widest part of the build. You can imagine the Scout Troopers carrying a little something right here. And then for the design at the very back, they use like butcher's knives in black, which I really love that recolor. I think it's come in other sets before, including the Ninjago City Gardens, I want to say. But it is a more uncommon color for that part. So I like seeing it here and I think it works well. And then the other bike for Luke and Leia, you can see is nearly identical. The only difference is here off the very back, where there is studs for a second minifigure to sit. And there's a little bit of a hinge to this too. So you can have the character's legs more down like this or sitting up more flat. If you want to change the bikes to make them both identical, it probably wouldn't be too difficult to do. But yeah, by default, that's the only difference between them. And then taking a look at the bikes underneath, they actually use this piece, which I believe is all new for this set. I've never seen it before. But yeah, it's like this rounded three wide piece. I've obviously seen the two wide version of this, but never three. But you can see it's got holes in the bottom of it. So you connect the action post piece or the trans clear bar into those holes, and that will actually hold the bike up on the diorama. So there you go, there's how it connects. You can of course rotate it or rotate the base to give it slightly different angles and slightly different looks. You can of course swap around the Scout Trooper and Luke and Leia. And in fact, you can even just move the entire trans clear bar section to different parts of the build if you want to display them in a different part. But I've just got them where the set had them by default. Lots of different options for displaying this set, which I do like to see, because of course they fly all over the forest in this scene in the movie, so there's no like one correct way to do this. But I think that's about all I have to show you for the build of the set, so now let's take a look at the minifigures that it comes with, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. So here are the first two minifigures in the set, we have the Endor versions of both Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. These are really exciting minifigures to get because it's been a very long time since we've gotten either of them. From what I can tell, we haven't gotten Endor or Luke from literally the first wave of LEGO Star Wars ever in 1999. So it's been over two decades since our last Endor Luke figure. And then Leia we got a little more recently in 2009, but even still it's been 14 years since the last version of her. That was back before they even put pupils on the minifigures. So yeah, it is safe to say these are amazing figures to finally have. And I also have to say, they went all out with these, because they both have all new torso leg prints, and they're both unique to them. These two are in a very similar outfit, so they very easily could have given them the exact same torso and leg print. But no, they went for full movie accuracy, they gave them their own unique prints, and I'm so happy they did because yeah, these guys look great. You can see Luke uses dark tan as his base color, but then he's got sand blue and olive green camouflage printing on top of that, a little bit of metallic silver for his belt, and then like dark brown for the outfit under his cloak. You can see he has his gloved hand, which is a nice touch. And you can see both figures use the Endor helmet piece, which is not new, that's come in a few figures before, but still very cool to get because it's not super common. Taking a look at Leia's outfit, of course she's got that olive green base color, but then she's also got dark tan sand blue camouflage on top. She comes with like a little blaster pistol as an accessory, while Luke comes with his green lightsaber. And even little things between these two figures, right? Like they both have the hoods folded down to the back, and they very easily could just reuse an asset there and made them look exactly the same, but no, the hoods are ever so slightly different. I really like that, it makes these guys feel more individual. It's really great to see. Taking the helmets off, you can see a full look at their face prints. Same face prints they've had on other figures, so nothing all too exciting there. But I mean, it does fit both these characters really well, so no complaints from me. I do wish they came with alternate hair pieces too, because Luke does get a new hair piece in another set in this wave, so it would have been great if it was also included as an alternate piece in this set, but I suppose it's not a huge deal. Would have definitely driven up this set's value a bit though. And then the final minifigure in the set is the Scout Trooper, and this figure is not new nor exclusive. It's the same Scout Trooper we've been getting for a few years at this point, 
screen. However, there's a reason they haven't changed it, because this is a very, very good version of this character. Torso and legs are super detailed, transition into each other so nicely. I love how there's hip printing and leg printing here. The helmet piece is great too, dual molded in black and white, with little bits of gray printing on it too. Yeah, these guys feel perfectly translated from the movie, and while I don't have a ton to say about them, there's nothing I would change about them either. I really, really like these minifigures. This guy also has a little blaster as an accessory, and then taking the helmet piece off, there you can see the face print, which is just one of the generic male face prints that Lego has, and then no alternate face around the back. And so, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? <sighs> it's hard to say, because while I feel like I was mostly positive in this video, and I do think this set is pretty good, I feel like it's not good enough, because at the end of the day, it just comes back down to the price, and I'm sorry, this is nowhere near an $80 set in any world. For one, it's only 600 pieces, so right off the bat, 600 pieces for $80, not a great deal. But then you gotta keep in mind how many of those pieces are small, because you have all that foliage on the ground, that's a significant part of the set. So take into account the actual size of the set, this feels like it should be $50, maybe $60. $80 just feels like way too high of a price. Additionally, while I'm really happy we finally have new versions of Endor, Luke, and Leia, I feel like them alone don't justify the price of this set. Only three minifigures for $80 is a little bit sad. So while I feel like you don't really need any other minifigures for this scene, if they're gonna charge so much money, throwing in some extra minifigures or heck, even alternate hair pieces would've made this set feel a little bit more worth the money. Like, even if they included a second scout trooper, even if you didn't fit anywhere in the diorama, I don't know, that would've been something. So yeah, unfortunately, while I do like this set, it just feels way too small for the price, so I don't think I would recommend it. If you find it on sale or you just don't really care about price, then sure, pick it up. I did have a lot of fun building it, and I do think it looks pretty good. However, there's definitely better options out there for the price, and considering the entire range of Star Wars diorama sets, even though I like this one, it's probably my second least favorite. So yeah, I would just say there's better options out there. A good set, but if you're interested, probably wait for it to go on sale. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!